Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 9.2 velocity time graphs. 9.2 represents chapter 9, section 2 of the place in A level maths applied maths year 1. Let's go. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section, starting off with two important notations. V represents velocity, T represents time. Velocity is a vector quantity, this means that velocity consists of magnitude and direction. Speed is a scalar quantity, this means that speed consists of magnitude only, there is no direction. Consider the following velocity time graph. In this scenario, we have constant velocity object, V is unchanged over T. Let's have a look at this velocity time graph. In this scenario, we have constant acceleration object. So, V is increasing at a constant rate over T. Finally, this velocity time graph over here indicates constant deceleration object. V is decreasing at a constant rate over T. We have some more important facts over here. The acceleration from a velocity time graph is basically the gradient of the velocity time graph. It is given by change in velocity on the change in time. The area between a velocity time graph at the horizontal axis represents the distance traveled, or you could say displacement. So these are the key facts of 9.2 velocity time graph. I'll be implementing these key facts within this exam style question. Let's have a look at the exam style question. A train starts from the station X and moves with constant acceleration 0.6 meters per second per segment for 20 seconds. The velocity it has reached after 20 seconds is then maintained for T seconds. The train then decelerates from this velocity to rest in a further 40 seconds, stopping at a station Y. Part A, sketch a velocity time graph. Okay, so let's have a look at the velocity time graph. So in part A, we want a velocity time graph. The vertical axis is your V, which is meters per second. And the horizontal axis is your t, which is seconds. This is the origin. Okay, so what we have is the following. A train starts from a station x and moves with constant acceleration 0.6 meters per second per second for 20 seconds. Okay, so we know that <coughs> if we look over here, the acceleration is basically the gradient of the velocity time graph. So what we have here is an acceleration of 0.6 meters per second per second. So 0.6 meters per second per second has to equal change in velocity. So we go from the origin. Okay, that's where we start. We're moving off with constant acceleration of 0.6 meters per second per second for 20 seconds. Suppose that the change in velocity was V. So we divide this by the time, which is 20 seconds. Now to work out the velocity reached, during this first stage in the journey, we have to do v equals 0 0.6 multiplied by 20. So v is equal to 12 meters per second. Okay, so in the first stage in the journey, we have something that looks like this. Constant acceleration uh, for the first 20 seconds. Okay, and our constant acceleration is 0 0.6 meters per second per second, allowing us to reach a velocity of 12 meters per second, which we can now label. Right, but the velocity it has reached after 20 seconds is then maintained for t seconds. So we have a constant velocity for t seconds. Right. The train then decelerates from this velocity to rest in a further 40 seconds, stopping at a station 1. Okay, so now we have constant deceleration for a further 40 seconds, stopping at station 1. Okay, so basically what we have here is station X, and over here we have station Y. That there is the velocity time graph. Part B, given that the distance between the stations is 4.2 km, in mechanics, the distance is measured in meters. So 4.2 km is equivalent to 4,200 meters. Find part one, the value of T. Okay, so let's look at part B. Part one. Right, let's go back to our key facts. 
The area between the velocity time graph and the horizontal axis represents the distance travel or the displacement. Okay, so what we have here is that this area here of the trapezium has to equal 4,200. Now, alternatively, to calculate this area, you can actually work out the area of this triangle, this triangle, add it together, and then add this onto the area of this particular rectangle. But the easier way to work out the area would, would be to find the area of the trapezium. Okay, so let's just look at the area of the trapezium. So we've got a half. Suppose this is your A. So that A is basically T. Plus, suppose this whole distance here is your B. So A and B are your parallel sides of the trapezium. So what do we have here? Ladies and gents, we've got 20 plus T plus 40. So that would be t plus 60 multiplied by the height of the trapezium, which is 12. This has to equal 4,200. So 12 times a half is 6. Simplifying the bracket, we get 2t plus 60 equal 4,200. So now we have to solve for t. We can divide by 6 on both sides, we get... 2t plus 60 is equal to 700. Then we've got 2t equal to 640. Hence t is equal to 320. That is the value of t. Part 2. We want to work out the distance travelled by the train while it is moving with constant velocity. So over here, it's moving with constant velocity. So we want the area of this particular rectangle. That area is basically the distance traveled by the train while it's moving with constant velocity. Okay, so in part two, we want the area of that rectangle, which is 12 multiplied by t, 12 t. But we know what t is, it is 320. So we do 12 times 320. This is equal to 3,000. 840. So what we have is 3,840 meters or the distance traveled by the train while it is moving with constant velocity. That there, ladies and gents, completes the exam study question and this teaching video 9.2 velocity time graphs. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.